The primary difference between mandatory frequency and aerodrome traffic frequency airports or ATF is that you're not required to have a radio to use an ATF airport. However, if your aircraft is radio equipped, you must use the following procedures. Find the correct frequency in your Canadian flight supplements or on your VNC VTA charts. The ATF will usually be the airport's Unicom frequency, where one exists, or 123.2 if no Unicom is present. Procedures in ATF areas are similar to those at MF areas, although somewhat more restricted. The primary difference is that the entry to the ATF's airport circuit is limited to either an overhead the field approach or a straight in on downwind approach. So your required reporting points will be initial contact at least five minutes before entering the outer limits of the ATF area. Usually, but not always, five nautical miles. Baldwin Unicom, Challenger Ultralight Charlie Sierra Golf, 10 West, 3000, ATA eight minutes, uh, inbound for landing, requesting airport advisory. If the Unicom is in operation, you'll receive a response from the ground such as Charlie Sierra Golf, this is Baldwin Unicom. Runway 19 currently in use, the winds are light and variable, and the altimeter setting is 29.32. To which you would answer uh, Baldwin Unicom, Charlie Sierra Golf, straight in, left hand downwind 19, Baldwin. A check of the CFS shows that Baldwin is registered for skydiving operations, and if they're underway, it would probably rule out an overhead approach, leaving straight in on downwind as your only alternative. If you do decide to join overhead the field, make direct contact with the jump plane to coordinate your circuit entry and ensure that you don't create a hazard to descending skydivers. As you enter the ATF area, continue listening in on the Unicom frequency. Then, as you join the aerodrome circuit, report in, giving your position. Baldwin Unicom, Charlie Sierra Golf, joining straight in, left hand downwind, 19 Baldwin. As you enter the circuit, be even more vigilant about possible conflicting traffic than at a mandatory frequency aerodrome. Especially at mid downwind, the only other position in the circuit where inbound aircraft should be joining. On downwind at any aerodrome, you'll do your pre landing checks. Confirm you're satisfied with the runway in use, and then make your turn onto base. After a careful look around for potentially conflicting traffic, make your turn onto final. Then, once established, make your next position report. Baldwin Unicom, Charlie Sierra Golf, established uh, final 19 Baldwin. As you descend towards the runway, remember expect the unexpected. Then, after you land and have cleared the active landing area, make your final report. Baldwin Unicom, Charlie Sierra Golf, clear 1-9, Baldwin. Once your engine is started, it's good practice to call in for a radio check. Baldwin Unicom, Charlie Sierra Golf for a radio check. If the Unicom is in operation, the operator will respond. If not, you may receive a radio check from other aircraft in the area. Charlie Sierra Golf, Baldwin, 5x5. Five five. As at a mandatory frequency aerodrome, monitor the Unicom frequency while taxiing out to the runway. And again, feel free to advise other aircraft in motion of your position and intentions. Uh, Baldwin Unicom, uh, Challenger Ultralight Charlie Sierra Golf, taxiing to runway 19. Once you're ready for takeoff, broadcast your departure plans before entering the runway. Baldwin Unicom, Charlie Sierra Golf, departing runway 19, straight out, Baldwin. Unless there's conflicting traffic, it's unlikely you receive a response to this transmission. So after ensuring it's safe to do so, proceed onto the runway, make your takeoff, then climb straight ahead to circuit height before making your final ATF report as you depart from the airport. Baldwin Unicom, Charlie Sierra Golf, departing the circuit to the west. After that, continue to monitor the aerodrome traffic frequency until you're clear of the ATF area. Then switch to the en route frequency of 126.7. The primary factor to bear in mind at ATF aerodromes is that Nordo or receiver only aircraft may be operating out of the field with no restrictions other than to follow standard circuit procedures. But just because these aircraft should follow standard procedures doesn't mean they will. So even more than in mandatory frequency areas, expect the unexpected. 
Make sure you're also aware of special operations such as gliding or skydiving are taking place at the aerodrome. Gliders can present a very small profile in the air and skydivers are all but invisible before their parachutes open. So be sure to work with those overseeing these special operations to ensure you get as much information as possible on the current position of potential hazards. The rules for reporting positions while performing continuous circuits or overflying the aerodrome are the same as in mandatory frequency areas. But it's even a better idea to avoid overflying ATF areas altogether, given the increased chances of possible conflict with other aircraft.